Welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. With me, of course, you know the one and only Chef Doug Fee. And today, I'm going to go out on a limb. It's Friday, Fry. Oh, my voice. That song, I tell okay. you. What are we doing? I think, I think your brain is fried, but we're doing, we're actually frying some foods today. And uh, we have an awesome menu. We're starting off with some appetizer of fried alligator. Just an entree of a fried cinnamon chicken. And we'll finish off with some apple fritters. We have a very exciting episode for you. So stick around for this episode of Dish It Out. Welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. I'm Frank Benowitz, and with me, of course, you know this guy, stronger than any fly, it's Chef Doug Fee. Welcome to the culinary school at Mercer County Community College. So we're very happy to, uh, we're going to make some apple fritters today. So we're going to have a, 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 a theme day. Do you know what that theme is? I know this theme because I've been looking forward to this theme probably in the entire eight plus years I've been here. It's Deep Friday. Okay, so we're going to utilize a couple of ingredients uh, and use our fryer in our appetizer, entree, and dessert. Excellent. So it's all good. So to start off, let's, we're going to start with dessert because that's what we want to start with. That's the Jacques Therese quote. Absolutely. Eat, Eat dessert first, right? Absolutely. So we started here, we, we, we whipped up our batter here, and we cut our, our batter down. Uh, we made a third of a, of a batter. so. Uh, we actually have our, we sit started with our dry ingredients first. We sifted together our flour, our salt, our sugar, and our cinnamon. So we had our dry ingredients, then we added our wet ingredients, which are, is our milk. We had whole milk, and we added some egg yolks into this. But we separated out our egg whites. Why would we do such a thing? We want to get some, some volume. We want to get some, uh, some light, 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 light and fluffy fritters. So the egg whites, by folding them in, will create that that levity, unlike my uh, rented lips of levity humor. Exactly. So we want to pump up the volume. So we have our two egg whites here. And I have them in a little glass container here. And you can see that there's no egg yolks at all involved in this because the fat from the yolks will help prevent the, uh, the whites from whipping up nice and light and fluffy. So we're going to put Frank, we're going to put you to work, Chef. All and right. Our egg whites in there, and you're going to whip those up. Absolutely. Does this make it a little healthier since there's uh, less cholesterol, I guess? Not really, but now since we don't have all day, Frank, let's try, let's bring out the big guns here. Holy Toledo. So, you, that's a heck of a whisk there. It is indeed a balloon whisk. A balloon it is whisk. A large economy size. This, this will make my job much quicker and easier. Well, that is the point. Right tool for the right job, right? You see, our, our batter got kind of thick here. When we mix together the wet and dry ingredients, what we do is we let that sit aside for about 20 minutes. And what that's going to do is allow the uh, baking powder to activate up and, and incorporate our, our flavor of our cinnamon throughout the batter. And we're going to add in our apples now. And you can use whatever apples you kind of like, but uh, you really don't want to add your apples too soon because they can get all weepy in your batter and we want our batter to hold together for us. So we're just going to fold these in. And uh, I think today we used some Granny Smiths, right? We, we did indeed. A little bit so of the tart. That tartness will be quite nice. So many beautiful apples available in New Jersey, especially this time of year in the fall. There, there's a lot to choose from. And you, you know, you can go anywhere and, and really pick up some beautiful apples. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat up our oil here. So I just want to check our temperature. And we're going to we use, uh, use canola oil in here. We can use any type of oil. I mean, some people like to use the peanut oil. Because if you have uh, concerns with allergies, that might not be such a good idea. Are you done yet? No. Okay. <laughs> How about now? Yes. Okay. You can see, one of the things you want to do when you're making your fritters is cut up your apples about the size we have here. Um, and if you make them much bigger, then they're not going to cook through. If you make them much smaller, then they kind of get lost. So this will allow the, our, our apples to cook through, and we'll be able to find them in our fritters. That's the downside of the balloon whisk. I'm making a lot of noise over here. 
We're used to you making a lot of noise here, Frank, so no this worries. Is, this is true. Is that good for you? Beautiful. Nice. Okay, nice soft peaks, which is what we want. And we're going to fold it, and we kind of use a turning motion so we don't want to lose any of the volume of our egg whites. Worked so hard to get that volume in there, we don't want to lose it. We want to distribute that as evenly as we can throughout the batter. And you can see that really thick batter we had just a few minutes ago is really starting to thin out and be a little more manageable with our egg whites in there. And the best part is yet to come. Fry oil, would that be what you're referring to? Absolutely. Okay. Well, that and eating them, of course. You know, that's always my favorite part. Shocking, I know. Okay. So we got a temperature. We're just at about 350, and we're using a, a thermometer, um, stem thermometer. What you have to be careful of is that the tip of the thermometer does not hit the bottom of your, of your pan. Otherwise, that's going to skew off your temperature, and you're going to be not as hot as you think, which I, I imagine could happen. Has that ever uh, happened to you? It happens throughout my entire life. I've never been as hot as I thought. But then I don't think very much about it either. So. All right, so we're right at 350 here, and I'm just going to get a little scoop here. And you can use spoons at home, whatever, whatever you have handy. And we're going to fish them out. We have a little, what we call a spider here. We're just going to gently put it in there. We're going to do the swimming method. So we want things to go along swimmingly, as it were. And this is nice, too, because if you don't have one of those portable deep fryers, which obviously you could use at home, but if you don't, you can invest in a thermometer, do this on the stovetop, or get a portable burner and maybe do it outside. A lot of people don't like the smell of deep frying within the home. Maybe this is something that they can do outside uh, in the summer, doing barbecue or something like that, and use the same oil and uh, fry a few different things, strain it if you want afterwards, and reuse it even the next day if you cool it down properly. Now that you don't mind the smell of deep fry oil in, in your home, do you, Frank? I think it's just as nice as the cologne I use. You have the scented candles as well? A little bit under the pits, no? Well, I don't know that I want to go there. What you can see what we're doing here is we're putting them in and we're, we're giving, we don't want them so close together that they're going to stick together. We want to give them a little room. Okay, give them their space. Now they have that 3D television out there. Does that come with that smell vision we've talked about for years or is that still something that hasn't happened yet? I'm going to say no. Oh. Okay. It's sad to be you. Oh. But of course they can come here and take a class with us because we teach this particular recipe in our food preparation one class. Indeed we do. And we have yet to get a uh, shameless plug-in today, so come take a class, credit or non-credit, and you can learn this, and more importantly, you can smell it and taste it after you're done creating it. On the credit side, we have our, our, our full-fledged culinary school now, where we have culinary arts and pastry arts, both quite good. All right, and I'm going to shut this down. When you, we, when you monitor the temperature here, um, you want to be careful you don't get too hot. Um, we want to keep it right at 350, which is where we're at. We got a little bit higher than we wanted to. We don't encourage our students getting high with their oil, or at all, for that matter. But how good would they have been in some lard? Oh, that uh, the cake boss does is cannoli shells in lard. All right, we don't need to be plugging other shells here, Frank. What we do need to plug are the programs here at Mercer County Community College, because we have some outstanding programs. And if you take some of our non-credit courses, like our knife skills class, you come and play, you get to take the knife home with you. If you take some of our other courses, uh, again, you can sample the different uh, foods that our chefs make. You can come in and participate, and uh, you don't have to do the dishes. We do that for you. Speaking of that knife skills course, depending on when you're watching this, because it's always timing is everything, as they say, right now we're giving with that class a uh, Guy Fieri uh, chef knife from his uh, series. Not that we want to plug his shows, but... Uh, Maybe he'll come visit us since we're mentioning him on the air. Well, that would be fair. That would be nice. Or the cake boss, for that matter. We'd love to have him come down and see us, too. Bring some cannolis. Okay, so our fritters are coming out of there. And you can actually smell the apple and the cinnamon oh, along yeah. with the fat. You can't smell the fat. I don't want to disappoint you there. I know, but they look great. Look at that, look at that color. I mean, some people go too light on them. This, this is perfect. I want to get nice, nice coloring on there. Isn't that beautiful? You know, it would be good if you had a, like a, a corn dog in there. Now here's something we'll do here. I want to turn them over and get, and get the uh, excess fat off as best I can. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. Uh, you know. Someone's got to be the killjoy. 
No, that's, uh, you're probably helping prolong my life two, three extra minutes, and I appreciate okay. it. All right, so what we're going to do, instead of putting the powdered sugar all over our plate and, and our garnish, we'll do that over here. Okay, just a little confectionery sugar. I know our, our, our bakers love to do this. You cover everything in powdered sugar, but in this case, it's a recipe that can't miss. Oh, yeah. That is, be is that not beautiful? Oh. They, do they all need to make it to the plate? Oh, we're going to be eating from the plate anyway. Well, you know, it's all good. Especially when we're talking fried apple fritters. Oh, they're magnificent. Are we doing some <coughs> French uh, press coffee with this too? Well, if you want to, you're more than welcome to. So there we have our deep fried apple fritters. And uh, you know, they are looking pretty darn good. They are. Would you like to sample? Those are the pretty do ones. You you even have, do you even have to ask? Goes for the big one. Oh, that, that's, uh, oh that's hot. It's hot. Cheers. Are my eyes deceiving me? I know we're deep frying today. Is this what I think it is? What are we frying? You know, it kind of looks like chicken, but what we have here is alligator. Gator. Gator meat, and this is the filet of the gator, which is from the tail. Is that the gator don portion of the uh, gator? Ooh, that's bad. I know, I'm sorry. Okay. It had to be done. Well, the, uh, the, the gator meat is actually very lean, and if you, and if you think of it in terms of, uh, of content, fat content, um, a four ounce serving has three ounces of, uh, of three grams of fat. So, and, and only one of those grams of fat is saturated. So it's, uh, it's very lean meat, and uh, it's good stuff. Of course, we're going to, you know, unlean it by frying it, but that's oh, okay. We're adding a little fat where it's uh, been neglected from its own life. Exactly. So this is actually for a farm-raised uh, alligator. And so uh, it's done its duty. It's given us some, some filet. So we're going to cut them up. And before you go and rush off to buy some, uh, this usually averages somewhere around $20 a pound for this uh, gator filet there. But, again... Instead of going out to eat every once in a while, you treat yourself to some gator. Exactly. So we're doing some chunks. Oh, we have our White House Chef Seal That's right. uh, knife there. Oh, you can play at these if you come visit us, maybe. So you just want some. We're going to cut these just right up into some chunks. And uh, what we're going to do is we want to keep those. When we're frying, one of the things that we want to try and do is, is keep things a uniform size. So this way they're all done about the same size, same time. And... Uh, Gator nuggets. Exactly. You don't see that on the menu at your local restaurant, do you? And a little pepper. And you can keep going there, Frank. Don't stop. All right. And we're going to put these right in dredging. And this is just all-purpose flour. We're just going to dredge these out. And any time you do like what's considered the standard breading, which is typically uh, flour, egg wash, and then some kind of coating, um, you always want to keep one hand dry, one hand wet. I like to use the tongs here. It's even better. Because that way, yeah, I keep my hands dry. And this is going into a mixture. This is our sauce mixture. And this is actually going to be a dipping sauce, not the raw product that we use in here. But we have made some extra sauce. That's going to be our dipping sauce. And all it says is buttermilk and uh, chipotle hot sauce. Yep. So it's uh, real easy to put together. And for a cup of uh, buttermilk, we added about uh, an ounce of the chipotle hot sauce. And you can adjust that according to your tastes. But we know this is delicious. That's the important thing. All right, so I got all my alligator out of here. I have some spare pieces over here that are similar size, so a few more. And if you wouldn't mind handing me another pair of tongs. Certainly. So instead of keeping our hands one wet, one dry, we'll do, the, we'll do that with our tongs. Toss them gently, our flour, try and get off the excess flour so we're not, I'm going to taste our alligator later, not uh, big gummy balls of flour. It doesn't even sound particularly attractive when you say it, let alone when you bite into it. I wasn't even going to go there. You had me a big gummy balls, what? as they say. All right. But I know exactly what you're saying. That, that happens quite too often yeah. with, the, uh, with the deep fry. And I think we're going to. So I'll drain off the excess, and it's going to go right back into our flour here. So and we just double dip. Exactly. So we can do this with, with, our, with our batter. And we want to make sure our, our fat is at the right temperature, which is what? What's our temperature supposed to be again? 
375, I believe we're going for this one, but the 350 to 375 in that range. Exactly. As you said before, this is a product that actually will cool down because of the uh, amount of moisture to it. Exactly, it's, and it's a little more dense, so it's, it's going to draw down the temperature of our oil. All right. And this is one you definitely want to be a little more precise because you just double dipped them, so it's going to have a lot of breading, exactly. which will be so. quite delicious. But uh, All right. Tongs are good to a point, but eventually, you know, if we don't have all that excess flour on there. Your best tools, gonna, right? There you go. I'm going to put these Ooh, in. Ooh, gators in. Very gently. We don't want to do that with a splash. Uh, what we did is we also, we had to, we patted these, uh, this dry, because these, these are a high moisture content. Whoops. Did you bring the, uh, uh, who, cut, who uh, cut this uh, one? Hey, hey, oh, sorry. So. You got the matching uh, shoes and purse and belt. Uh, With our gator. For the gator. Oh, this gator, I'm telling you, he did not okay. die in vain. If there's any vegetarians out there, close your eyes. All right. So now you can see this is kicking up some, some moisture, which is okay. We'll just dial this back. We are right at 300 and, well, 380. We overshot yeah. by five degrees, but we got not a too bad. More even. That'll lower that. You know, that's what it was. It was those other pieces, Frank, that were short. Not that I want to place blame, but it is your fault. That is true. Okay, I will three. accept responsibility. You can see how they're, how they're cooking here. They're looking very tasty. Oh, yeah. Now, what temperature yeah. do we need our gator cooked to is for sanitation purposes? You know, it is a, a You want to eat it raw, right? It's true. It's a game meat, and um, well, with this, what we're most, would be most concerned about would be uh, parasites. Yes. So 145 is our cooking temperature. You don't want Just any like gator tartare, right? No, that's for sure. Oh, we. I'm telling you, I don't know why places, I guess just because of the price. Look how good that looks. And that batter, you can see that batter really stuck on there quite nicely because we, uh, we floured it first. All right, so the flour stuck to the gator and then the batter stuck to the flour. Oh my goodness. And all is right with the world. Well, not really. I don't have a fork in my hand. I don't have a pair of tongs to plate up either. I gave you a pair. Well, did I you dirty those that. as well? I did indeed. Oh, okay. chef, you're dirty today. So, you can see we have our... That's a pretty plate. We got some of that. Here. That's that reserve sauce you said that we uh, used to provide that marinade for the gator. Exactly, with our, our buttermilk. That's a nice marinade too because you really just have to dip it. You don't have to let it sit in there for ages and uh, it really does pick up a lot of flavor. It does indeed. Look at that. Oh man. I feel like I'm in New Orleans. Okay. New Orleans. Now. Does that mean I have to root for the Saints now? You don't have to get too carried away. Oh, Drew Brees would eat that up, wouldn't he? All You're right. on name well, dropping we, today. Again, we won't let you eat off the pretty plate, but. Uh, Ooh, I got, I got this, this might be. Oh, you, get, you had the wrong idea. Let me get a paper towel. I want to get myself sick there. Okay. What do you got there? Oh, gator. So the, 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 this product itself is, is pretty <sighs> dense, but you can see the, it's a little warm. A little warm. It, it, yeah. I think it that's, that's through, hotter than microwave popcorn. But when you're looking at it, though, you can see that the grain, and it is, it is fairly dense, um, but it's still tender. I mean, even though the, the density doesn't detract from the, from the flavor, it is nice and tender. Can I eat now? So we can eat now. Link. I have to tell you, this has probably been my favorite episode in all the seasons we've done Dish It Out with this deep frying cooking method. And I see here we have our favorite local Griggstown Farm Market chicken thighs. And I have a strong feeling I know where you're going with this, and it's going to bring back such wonderful memories. Am I right? I hate to say it, but you're right. <laughs> it's, uh, this is a, a recipe, actually, that we did in one of our restaurant classes a few years back that uh, our student-run restaurant classes. And the students have to do everything. They have to come up with the menu, the concept, and then actually prepare everything from scratch. So uh, this is one of, one of our favorite recipes from that. And this is cinnamon fried chicken. Cinnamon so, fried chicken. It doesn't get better than that. It, it, it really doesn't. Well, the, uh, we're using the thighs. Uh, the thighs are, are nice and moist. Uh, they're also very flavorful. And so they're also very forgiving. And this is the boneless, so it makes for easy eating. 
Why are they boneless, the though? Because we fabricated them. Yes, and by we, we mean? We mean our meat fabrication class that we have here as part of one of our culinary classes here at the culinary school at Mercer County College. And that way we're able to utilize not just reusing the oil, but we're able to utilize the thighs for this class. We'll use the chicken breasts in our Food Prep 2 restaurant class. We'll use the bones in our Food Prep 1 stocks class. So we're really getting to uh, make sure that this chicken's life uh, was, was well worth its yes, sacrifice. It gave its all. Because as a <laughs> chef, we, want, we, only, you know, we not only want to make things uh, taste good, but as a chef, you have to be inherently cheap. Because if you're not making money for whoever hires you, you're kind of useless. So uh, that's one of the things we try and uh, point out here uh, at the culinary school here is that you not just have to have a chef's hat, but you have to have your business hat on as well. Absolutely. So without further ado, is it that time? It's that time to get started here. And these pretty garnishes are, are very nice, but they're in the way. We just didn't want to uh, have the focus on raw chicken there. And we uh, try to look out for you. You don't have the smell of vision, so you have to rely just on sight and hearing, if you can hear us. And if you can't, uh, we've been told to notify your, uh, your local channel there. Because sometimes you, you can't hear us. And that's important to be able to see and hear us. More so than anything else in your life. Mm. And I'd like to be heard now, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we've, seasoned up our, we've seasoned up our chicken with uh, salt and pepper. And uh, we're just going to dredge this in flour and, and nothing fancy, just basic fried chicken. And we're looking for a temperature of 350 to 375. Again, we want to be at a minimum of 350. And uh, you can see the chicken here is fairly thin. It's pounded out boneless thighs, and we just want to get a light coating on there. We don't want all kinds of extra flour on here. All right, we're going to gently put this into our oil. And even though you have many years of experience and can probably tell it's done this, we do have our thermometer here to make sure we do hit that 160 to 165 range. Remember, the carryover cooking will get you a few more degrees, so, uh, but you don't want chicken underdone. We want it just done, and that's one of the things we talked about earlier with the chicken. Uh, how do you know it's done? Well, you've got to take the temperature. It may be golden brown, or it may be, well, it was in there for 10 minutes. Well, that's all well and good, but how do you know it's done? So, I don't know. I have a problem with salmonella, so I try to make sure that it's done. Exactly. Unless you really have a great book that you want to read while you're spending some well, time Well, let's there. not go there. Okay. You know what I was going to say. Okay. So, while our chicken is frying, we're going to go ahead and make our cinnamon sauce, which is really, really complicated. No, it's not. You're going to like this <laughs> sauce. It's, it really goes together quite easily. Uh, we're going to heat up our, our pan, and we just put our ingredients in there. And when they come to boil, they're done. We're going to start off with our sake. I'm sorry, that's our soy sauce. Soy sauce, yeah. Three tablespoons of soy sauce. You want to start with the booze right away? Why not? And we'll go with our dry sherry or sake. You can use either or. We have some uh, dry sherry in this case. And our brown sugar. Some light brown sugar we're using. And our red chili that we, uh, we sliced and de-seeded. And actually, this is some fresh local ghost chili. So we're going a little hot. I know you're not a huge fan of the hot, but... Uh, I have delicate taste buds. What can I say? We'll, we'll, we'll use a little less then. We won't use it all. You're all right, Frank. I don't care what they say about you. Oh, uh, and they say so much, too. And then we got uh, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And we have our, our new tongs by uh, our friends over at Ergo Chef. They had created a tong that actually has silicone, so you can use it to stir your sauce and not damage your pan. So it's nice. Less, less you have to clean, the better, right? Exactly. You know, especially if you have a Teflon pan. I mean, pans are expensive, especially if you get a good one. Uh, and it, it really pains me when I see anyone using a Teflon pan and scraping away at it with something that's it shouldn't happen. Exactly. So now we have the silicone coating, and we're just going to bring this to a boil, reduce it almost to uh, almost to that gloss type consistency. Exactly. So while that's reducing down. Um, our chicken here, and uh, it's a true or false question. Uh, deep frying is a dry heat or moist heat cooking method. How's that true or false? Well, A or B. I'm going to go with A. Okay. Yes, it is a dry heat cooking method. Because even though it's in liquid, the liquid is fat. So unless it's actually uh, a liquid uh, that contains moisture, then it's a dry heat cooking method. So I'm going to take a peek at our chicken here. How's that looking? And it's looking good. Can you, can you smell this cinnamon over here? I can't yet. No? 
There's too much hot air between me and the, the pan, I think. Is, you talking about me talking? I didn't say that, did oh. I? All right, so we cleared our raw chicken out of the way, washed our hands, we're ready to go with the cooked product. I'm mesmerized. It's calling me. It's a beautiful thing. What we want to do is we want to take the temperature, and this has to be 165 degrees. So we'll just poke that through and make sure we are there. And there we are, 170 oh, yeah. degrees, just where we want to be. And we're going to put this on our paper, reserve some of that excess oil out of there. And that's the beauty thing about the uh, chicken thighs. You know, they're going to take a little longer to cook on, you know, than the, uh, the breast would. And uh, if they go a, a couple degrees, really, in either direction, they can be very forgiving. But man, do they look perfectly cooked. This would be really, this is something too, if you, you, know, if you have a, a large party, you could cook up a bunch of this. That and one's the thighs would be very forgiving. I'm sorry, that one's breathing. Not for long, because. Look at it. Oh my, look, there's a little bubble. Oh my goodness. Now when we, when we fry in this method, oh, that sorry. could be it. Oh, I'm just getting too excited over here. Easy now. All right. all right. So this is all cooked. If I wanted to do this ahead of time, I could make a bunch of these and put them on a sheet pan. So if I wanted to reheat them for, for a larger party, that's easy enough to do. Wow, they look good. So they do look good, but they're going to get even better. Because we have our sauce, and, and you know we have a nice crisp chicken here, and what we don't want to do is make it soggy. So just before service, what we're going to do is we're going to brush it with a little of our uh, cinnamon sauce. Again, we want to make sure this is hot, but this is going to cool very quickly. So you can see that kind of glazed look there. Just like the one in my eyes as I'm looking at you do that. Oh, uh, if you could, uh, seriously, I, I don't mean to push the smell of vision thing, but this is really, somebody out there, get on that. There's a wonderful flavor, and you can see it's, it's picking up on us, but this is what we want. If you have the DVR, hit pause right now and light a cinnamon candle in your house. Of course, you won't have the chicken to eat with it, so but, you, know. you know how to make it now. Two pieces? So, yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So be it. You can always come back for more, right? All right, a little chopped chives for a garnish here. And we're serving it with just some uh, sautéed julienne vegetables. Well, not julienne, but sweet, uh, sautéed batonata vegetables and some uh, sweet potato mash. Um, with a little, uh, it's got a little cumin in it, so just add a little... Flavoring in oh, there as nice. well. So. A little smoky. And uh, there we have it, our cinnamon fried chicken. I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Dish It Out. We had a, we had a terrific time tonight. I'm telling you, this is a perfect example why every day should be Friday. Alligator, chicken, fritters, it's all good. And uh, if you want to learn more about how to cook, come join us here at the Culinary School at Mercer County Community College, where you can take both credit and non-credit courses. We hope to see you here, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.